and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So God was kind to the midwives and the people increased, they increased some more, and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. Okay? So now we're going to go to Exodus, the second chapter. This is the birth of Moses. Okay? Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Now we just hear that anybody that has a son supposed to throw him into the Nile, okay? When she saw that she was fine, when she saw he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she, but when she could hide him no longer, she got Piper's basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister, Moses' sister, asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of water. So I'm gonna go back to Exodus, the first chapter, and we're gonna park real quick and talk about two ladies. And um, I spoke about this um, last year sometime about these two ladies that we don't talk about a lot in the Bible, but they were very significant in the Bible. So Shipra and Pua were midwives, and they were given the assignment that, okay, now, when these ladies start, these babies, okay, I need for y'all, now, let's go back and read what it says. It says, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him, okay? So this is what they were supposed to do. But they feared God more than they feared the king. Okay? So they said, oh, I don't think I can do that. They probably was looking at each other like, mm -mm, I'm not about to do that. So they didn't kill the boy. So when they were summoned, of course, by the king, they said, hey, these ladies, they give birth so fast. They strong, they vigorous. So by the time we got there, I mean, we couldn't do what you wanted us to do. And because of that, of course, God honored them. So I want to stop and I want to talk about what a midwife is because that's what these ladies were. They were midwives. They were in their rightful place at the right time. Okay? A midwife is a birthing attendant, a birthing assistant. Um, in these days, they even call them doula, doulas or they're called birthing coaches. A midwife is one that helps produce or bring forth something. So they help produce. They help bring forth something because they didn't kill. They didn't kill the baby, right? They were in their rightful place. God honored that they feared him. They saved a generation of people. They saved a male. Why? Because the male carries the seed. They saved a whole generation. The male carries the seed. So my question for us on today, 
Are you saving generations or are you destroying them? Are you holding up generations or pushing them? Are you birthing generations or are you aborting them? Are you saving bloodlines or are you tainting them? Are you saving legacies or are you creating legacies or are you destroying them? If we are in our rightful places, the, so listen to this. When they were talking, um, the king was like, oh my God, it's a lot of these people. It's a lot of Israelites. We need to do something about this. Well, guess what? If we're in our rightful place as believers and Christians, then that means that the believers will be increasing. The number of believers on the earth will be increasing. If we are in our rightful places, God will increase our lives. He will increase our fruit. Are you okay with being a midwife? A lot of times, we want to be in the limelight. We want to, you know, and, and let's be honest. A lot of times when people think of ministry, they think of being the pastor. They think of they think that that's the best place. I love being a pastor because I love serving people, but let me tell you, mm. it's not easy. Mm -mm. It's not all the way what you think it is all the time. Okay? Talking about sleepless nights. Talking about sacrifice. Okay? So let's just be clear that any time, it's not always peaches and cream, amen? But are you okay with being a midwife? Do you have to be in the spotlight or are you okay? So being a midwife means you gotta help bring forth something, right? So any of us women in here, the women in here that have had children, it's not a pretty process, okay? <laughs> Now, the all. doulas and the midwives that's down there <laughs> waiting, right. it can get kind of dirty. <laughs> it can get kind of messy. But are you ready for the messy and the dirty? Are you ready to be a midwife in those places that's messy and dirty? Are you afraid to get dirty? Are you afraid to go into dark places? Are you afraid to be a part of the dark or nasty part of people's lives without being judgmental or grossed out? Talk about it. Talk Ooh, about it. That's wow. good. Okay, that's what a midwife do. Are you okay with being in that place? So now, I'm gonna go to Exodus and we're gonna talk about Miriam because, guess what? She was in her rightful place, okay? She was there and she said, you know what, I'm just gonna stand right here. And I'm going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to be right here because I, uh-uh, I'm not going to let nothing happen to my little brother. Okay? She was in her rightful place, but she was unassuming. She was meek. She was wise. She was on her post. She was interceding. Okay? She was interceding. She was discerning and aware. Colossians tells us that if we're supposed to always be in prayer and be aware. There is no way she couldn't have been in prayer and she couldn't have been aware, okay? She was where she was supposed to be so that she could go up, hey, how are ya? So, do you want me to go and get one of the ladies to breastfeed him, you know? How about that? You know what, that's a good idea. So, she was in her rightful place, okay? She was on her post, she was interceding. So the Bible tells us, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So my question to us, and I keep saying us, is because it ain't just for y'all, it's for me too. So the question is, are you too lazy to stay on your post as an intercessor? Are you too lazy to stay on your post as an armor bearer? Are you tired? Are you selfish? Miriam could have been doing anything that she wanted, but she was in her rightful place. And not even that, Miriam was a prophet as well. She was a prophetess, y'all. In Exodus 15, the 20th verse, it says, Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all of the women followed her with timbrels dancing. So my question again, men and women, who is following you and what are you doing when they follow you? Are you leading on the straight and narrow path? Or are you leading astray? So here's the thing. People are going to do what you do and they're going to say what you say. Okay? Because guess what? It says that she took the timbrels in her hand and she started dancing. Okay? 
it didn't say that the women followed her and was running and was jumping up and down. It said they took the timbrels and they also danced. They followed exactly what she did. So the question about our lives being in our rightful places, are we leading the right life so that when people follow us and they doing exactly what we are doing, that we leading them the right way? Or are we being a stumbling block? The women, women followed her to a tee with timbrels and dancing. Here's another thing. What seeds are you planting as they follow? What fruit will come from those seeds? What image are you following? Are you following the image of Christ or the image of flesh? Okay? So she did what she was supposed to be doing. She was in her rightful place. She was a prophet. Listen, I even believe that when her mom put the baby in the Nile, she a prophet. Okay, she, that may be her brother, but she already knew, oh, I know what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm gonna stand right here. I'm gonna be on my post. I know what's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. But are we in our rightful places? The Bible says that we're always supposed to be praying and aware. Are we in our rightful places that we can discern, uh-oh, you know what, I know what's getting ready to happen. Okay, I'm prepared for this. I'm standing here ready. I already know what's going to happen, so I got a solution. But when we sleep on the job, we are not in our rightful place. These three women were in their rightful places. Now, there are other women in the Bible that were in their rightful places, but we're talking about these three ladies that were midwives that saved generations, okay? We're talking about that they saved generations so that something could be birthed, okay? They helped bring forth purpose. So in your rightful place produces fruit and increase. It produces increase in your finances. It produces increase in wisdom, grace, mercy, Love, happiness, joy, the seeds you are planted are about to increase. If y'all are, if we are all in our rightful places, I promise you, the seeds that have been planted by your hard work, your faith, your love, your praying, whatever it is, they are about to increase. They are springing up. They're about to rise. They're producing fruit. The aroma of the fruit will attract and compel those who will sow an increase into your life, naturally and spiritually. Somebody, some of us in here are about to be sown into naturally and spiritually because we are in our rightful places and because the fruit of our life is springing up and because the aroma of the fruit is sweet, it is going to attract the right people. Okay? It is going to attract the right people. And it should repel the wrong. You've been waiting. The seed has taken root. The fruit is about to show the good and the bad fruit. The seeds are not, the seeds that are not positive are taking root as well. The fruit is about to appear. And because those seeds are, are not uh, positive, so there are going to be weeds that begin to grow, but there is a weed whacker and a rotten seed demolisher that is here. Yeah. He is here to cultivate. He can demolish those seeds and plant the right seed and cultivate into your rightful place in your mind, body, soul, and your spirit. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And that is us. We've got to be in our rightful places. And listen, I'm all, I'm done all my Okay? Because it ain't nothing. It ain't a whole lot. Listen, I don't know what they preached about on Friday. I don't know what they talked about Saturday. I don't know what they talked about this morning. But I know that whatever that they ministered was right. Because they are talking to, and talk to us about being in our rightful place. So I am only here to show you and to tell you what God gave me about being a midwife. It's okay to be a midwife. It's okay to get nasty. It's okay to get dirty. It's okay to be behind the scenes. It's okay to help bring forth. It's okay to help birth. It's okay. We ain't gotta be in the limelight. 
I know that one of my gifts, I am a midwife, I know that. I'm a midwife, I don't care. Listen, when I had my son and my daughter, one of the parts that I did not like was after I had the baby, that nurse got up on top of me and she pushed my stomach down to get the afterbirth. I said, I wanted to kick her, okay? And that's the same thing that a midwife would do. I am here to push and help you birth and bring through whatever, hallelujah, the afterbirth. I am here to push and make you push out whatever it is that to be birthing. And so on today, we gotta come forth, y'all. Midwives, come forth, yes. okay? And as I was sitting there and I started writing and I was like, God, how many of these you want me to write? But we are gonna call it out in the atmosphere because I believe in calling stuff out in the atmosphere naturally so that it can be produced spiritually. Yes. I'm not one that I'm saying I'm gonna say it in my mind, but I'm talking about let's speak it out. So I'm going to speak it out so we serve the devil notice that this is what's going to happen. Okay? So I'm going to need y'all help. Okay? I'm going to need y'all to help me. Okay? I'm going to need y'all to push. Y'all my big lives on today. Come on. Now I need these set of people to come forth. If you notice that you in one of those capacities, you can walk up here. You can come out to the aisle, but I believe that there are even some of you that are watching maybe Facebook Live, or there are some that don't even know, haven't even heard it yet, but we are releasing a sound. God is gonna release this sound so that it goes in the atmosphere and the wavelength. And guess what, we ain't gotta worry about the devil trying to take it, because he only the prince, but he's the king of the airways. So whatever he says, guess what? It's gonna stand. So I need, to come forth, my intercessors. I need my prayer warriors to come forth. I need my prophets to come forth. My teachers, my preachers, pastors, shepherds, apostles, evangelists, ministry of help, praise dancers, praise and worship leaders, ushers, ministers, youth leaders, wives, husbands, grandparents, sons, daughters, husbands, aunts, uncles, royal priesthoods, Managers, supervisors, employees, business owners, athletes, musicians, entertainers. I need my news anchors to come forth to shift the atmosphere of the media. I need my insurance men and women because we know the only true insurance is God. I need my meteorologists to come forth and shift the climate, shift the atmosphere of some stuff. I need my mechanics to come forth my surgeons to come forth. I need my surgeons to come forth and go through and do some surgery on some heart. I need them to come through and do some surgery, hallelujah, some brain surgery to renew our minds, hallelujah. I need my doctors to come forth, my nurses to come forth. I need my receptionists to come forth, why? Because I need for you to intercept the plan of the enemy. I need my lawyers to come forth. My restaurant owners, custodians, trash men. I need the male men to come forth because you are about to deliver a message that is going to change the entire nation. I need my construction workers to come forth. My electricians to come forth. Why? Because I need some light to be shed on some darkness. I need, hallelujah, my soldiers to come forth. My plumbers to come forth. My accountants to come forth. The government officials to come forth. The security guards to come forth. The police officers to come forth. The wardens in the prisons to come forth. Because I need them to help break some chains off the people mentally. I need my comedians to come forth. Because there's a platform that comedians have that I need for them to be saved, sanctified, and holy. I need for my coaches to come forth. My principals, my teachers, my daycare workers, psychologists, sociologists, social workers, car salesmen, and realtors, because there's some houses that need to be built on foundations, and I need for some realtors to find 
of the people for putting those cows in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the reason why we need these people to come forth is because, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, because we need all of us to bring forth nation, to bring forth life, to bring forth legacy, to bring forth wisdom, to bring forth love, peace, joy, to bring forth righteousness, to bring forth anointing and grace, to bring forth courage, to bring forth strength, to bring forth resilience, to bring forth faith, to bring forth love suffering, to bring forth resources, to bring forth deliverance, to bring forth healing. We need all of us to hold up the wall, stand ready for battle and intercession. Now, if you're ready to do this, come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, and we will walk in obedience in 
our right to places as men, women of God, as children of God. Hallelujah. And that every place that we walk, we will shift atmospheres. We will shift climate. Hallelujah. Some of us are going to become meteorologists in the spirit. Because when you walk into some places, you should be shifting atmospheres. You know you're supposed to be shifting atmospheres. When you walk into a place, shift, shift, shift. Hallelujah. And it's because we have to allow, even on there, I talked about that we need to bring forth and come forth as plumbers. Why? Because when a plumber goes somewhere, he's trying to sometimes get the little gunk and all that stuff out. Well, guess what? The plumber is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he is taking everything out so that we can be prepared. Listen, you can't be in your rightful place if you have it. He needs you light. He needs you ready. He needs you ready for battle. So on today, God, we declare and we decree that everything that we called out will come to pass, Lord God. It will come to fruition. It will manifest. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, devil, I hear you. Even the things that we miss, we cover it with the blood of Jesus. We cover it with the oil. Just because I didn't say it, don't believe it ain't there. So we cover it in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our God is all known. Our God is all known in the name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands for being in the rightful place. Come on and magnify the Lord for being in the rightful place. Hallelujah. Glory to the name. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 If there's anybody that knows they haven't been in their rightful place and wants to come, may I? And wants to come for prayer, come on up. We can pray together. Hallelujah.